Hey there, Arconiac. Sorry, it's been a while. I apologize. Work has been busy. We just had a hurricane come through, and we're expecting another one tonight here in Florida. So I'm recording this just a few hours before it hits, and I want to get it out quickly. Because of the time crunch, this video will be more like a podcast, just a static picture on the screen, and I'll keep you updated on how I'm doing, but for now, let's dive into the mystery of only murders in the building. Though I haven't had time to cover this season, some of you know I've been covering it since season one. I think I was the first to suggest a series arc before it was confirmed by the showrunner John Hoffman in an old video called The Grand Arconian's Conspiracy and in another video during season one or right after season one called Who Threatened Jan, I suggested that Howard would be the series real villain. I suggested Howard would be the series villain. Lots of that has been disproven, some of it not, obviously, but it was so early in the show, so much has changed and come to light, especially in the last few episodes. I want to bring that back, so as long as I have power at the end of the season, the conspiracy will be updated, but today, we're going to get a little help from the cat in hat for our theory video. Yes, yes, we'll be using the process of elimination to find out who killed Sass. First and foremost, let's go over what I think is currently going on. The reveal that Dunoff knew the brothers sisters and Vince was in one of their films and one of his students threw me for a loop. It was a surprise. Finding his bones in the Arconi was also unexpected. I've had thoughts that I've not been able to talk about, but I believe that Dunoff was not killed, but died maybe of natural causes. Either way, the Westies did not kill him, but knew of his demise, putting his body in the incinerator and pretending he was still alive so they could ch keep their cheap rent. Helga, who was said to be Rudy's ex-girlfriend, I think she didn't want to take part in the scheme, so that is why she's no longer there or part of the Westies' besties. Helga's name written on Saz's desk tells us she knew of Helga, likely talked to her over the ham radio. Remember, Saz stated that people on the radio wish Charles died instead of Ben. This gives somewhat of a motive to the West Tower residents. Also, Saz knew of Dudinoff and the code to the room. That means she had either been there or gotten that information from someone. I'm suggesting Helga. The actors also figured out that it's all connected. The note left on Jan's door is the same message given to the trio at the beginning of the podcast before they got popular and was written by someone left-handed. They are also tech-savvy, able to set up cameras and access them through a cell phone. That is something a somewhat younger person would be able to do. I'm going to say 50 and under, at least by themselves. Not saying that it's impossible, but it's something that we should look out for as a possible mitigating factor. The incinerator was used to hide Sad's body, with Dudinoff's body also being in the incinerator. This suggests the person who put hers there is likely a person who at least knew that Dudinoff was down there. Not necessarily but highly likely. And this person would need to be strong enough to move Saz's body, if not by themselves, then with the help of another person. I've gone through all of the seasons to see if anyone of any mention fits any of this criteria, so let us get to a Calculatus Eliminatus. When you've mislaid a certain something, keep your cool and don't get hot. Calculatus Eliminatus is the best friend that you've got. Calculatus Eliminatus always helps an awful lot. The way to find a missing something is to find out where it's not. I'm going to fly through some of these, but here are some people who did or could have known about the podcast early on. Arnoff, Charles' neighbor, appears to be right-handed. He makes most of his gestures with his right hand. He has also not appeared since season one, so I take him out. Uma, Ursula, Lester, Oscar, and Teddy, some of them have not appeared for years. They all drink, jester, and have been seen wearing watches on their left hands. 
which is your non-dominant hand. To me, that clears them all from being suspects. Theo also appears to be right-handed. He mostly uh, gestures things leaning for his right side, such as handling things to people and gut-punching Oliver with his right hand when he kidnapped him and Mabel. I would have it appears that he is right-handed. The Arconiacs stated that they were there with the podcast from the beginning, even before Cinda mentioned them on Jimmy Fallon. They are all right-handed or unable to commit the crime, except for Marv. He gestures and raises his left hand on multiple occasions, but eats with a shovel grip using his right hand. He also knows about the secret passageways, he is more ambiguous. I'm not sure if he had shown up this season, I'd give him a go. But because he has not, I would say he's at the very least clear for the murder of Saz. Cinda, she could never do this herself or even with the help of someone. I think her as a suspect is preposterous, but she also didn't know of the podcast until after the note was left on Oliver's door and the trio went to her for help. Dr. Grover Stanley appears to be left-handed. He drinks from and often gestures with his left hand, but since he hasn't appeared since season two, I take him out as well. Howard Morris may be the biggest red herring of all time. We've seen him taking the minutes at Arconia board meetings. In it, he writes with his right hand. This should also take him out of contention. Glenn Stubbins, though he hasn't appeared much, I don't think he's a real viable suspect. He gestures and is seen eating an apple with his right hand. I'm assuming that he is also right-handed. There's no reason to think that he knew about the podcast in season one. Marshall P. Pope, he penned the screenplay and is shown taking notes, writing with his right hand. We have no reason he also knew of the podcast in season one, but he's right-handed. Beth Mellon holds drinks, fires a handgun with her right hand, making me assume that she is also right-handed. She states she saw the podcast getting hot and wanted to make a movie about it, not that she knew of them early on in the podcast history. The brothers' sisters also hold cameras with their right hands. For that reason alone, I believe neither of them are left-handed unless they had someone else they were working with. I think they should be out of contention, but they could have had someone else they were working with. But nothing suggests that they themselves knew of the podcast when it happened. As for the Westies, they could have all potentially known about the podcast as soon as it dropped being in vicinity of the trio and Mother Sauce kind of having a thing for Charles. But Vince Fish, though we see his eye patch switch sides, I think it's a red herring. There was never any visible bruising. He and Rudy did show some proclivities for electronics, especially with cameras. The drone they called a toy could be a hint that one of them had a part in setting up the cameras in everyone's apartment. However, while playing Oh Hell, we see Vince taking score and he writes with his right hand. So I am assuming he is not the person that wrote the note. Rudy also appears to be right handed. He makes gestures with such as lifting his shirt and the mouse pad for his computer is on the right side. Mama Sauce, I can't remember her name, stirs her sauce with both hands. She it was seen uh, she was seen stirring it with both her left and right hand, but she picks up cards from the game Oh Hell and drinks from glasses with her right hand. Papa Sauce, from what we've seen, he primarily carries a knife for that sweet meat in the bathroom with his right hand. He drinks from his right hand and he plays cards on the table with his right hand, leading me to believe that he is right-handed, leaving us to the daughter Anna, who we don't see much of, but she drinks from her left hand. This leads me to believe 
that she is left-handed. We don't see her do much, but of what we do, she did dominate towards, she did lean towards her left hand as her dominant hand. We don't get much of her, but we do know she dislikes how her mother pines for Charles. She also called Rudy's ex-girlfriend crazy and states that he can do much better, so maybe she kind of pines for him. She seems to be the most likely person Saz would hear from on the ham radio, Charles wishing Charles had died instead of Ben, so she wouldn't have to see her mother wearing push-up bras just to cook. She's young, likely left-handed, among the few who are most likely to be tech-savvy with a motive in one way or another to kill Charles. So with the calculatus eliminatus, I suggest my early protection is still correct. Anna is the killer, possibly with the help of moving the body from Rudy, who they may possibly have some type of thing going on. Anna could have stepped away at any point to conspire with a person strong enough to move Saz's body. In my opinion, she's most likely to send a text that says something like, I'm not your fucking friend. Maybe the father would say something like that. She's the one that seems to have the most animosity. Anna also did say to Mabel and Charles my mom wishes you brought your friend as if not my fucking friend. He's your friend. That's just an idea. And also, it's not that simple. There are holes. We still don't know what that silver colored string that looked like tinsel is. I've been racking my brain trying to Google things of what it could be. I still have no idea. The killer is a good shot. And Anna, nor anyone else, has shown any inkling of being proficient with a rifle. No reasoning, not an ex-police, not a hunter, or just for sport. The cameras, when were they placed? This would change everything. If placed after Saz was killed, this would explain how they were able to text Charles from Saz's phone in episode 1, dispelling his fears about why she disappeared without saying goodbye. This if this would have made Charles the target, I believe. But if they were placed before that night, the killer could have seen Saz leave all of his apartment and head to Charles, killing her because she got too nosy, Elder said on the radio that someone, guessing Saz was killed because they were asking too many questions. Maybe she was killed for asking too many questions about Dudenoff and someone didn't want to lose their cheap rent. Maybe that's what a lot of these threats to Oliver and Jan were about. It seems like it would be more, but I could be wrong. And don't forget, there is still a cold case. Charles and Oliver mentioned a cold case. This was before Dudenoff was thought to be missing or dead. It may be a throwaway line, but both of them mentioned it. Uh, Oliver multiple times but someone else appears to have died in the building sometime in the past this could tie into the overarching mystery and suggest that there are deeper secrets hidden within the Arconia walls I thought this whole thing seemed like a great series ending a story everything that we've seen so far is very series ending to me but I think they're just trying to bring it up to that point for the last season where they are sure that we see all the pieces before they reveal this final crime the final product of whatever is going on and I think it's all happened pretty naturally once the series is over I'll do a whole thing about all the arcs and how I think it's all worked pretty good I'm, I could go on. Before I lose power, I'd quickly also like to say that the note on Jane's door scared her so much that she stabbed herself. There's clearly something else that I feel like I'm missing. Maybe they had cameras in Tim Kono's room too and saw what she did there. Who knows? But that's all I have for now. I hope I can post another video this week or 
after the show has ended. If I get power back, I'll, I'll post a review for the following episodes. And then, of course, a series review. Either way, sorry again that I've been gone. Thank you all, the new faces and the ones who have stuck with me for all these years. Please leave a like if you can. My name is Dallas. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.